So are we supposed to start the podcast? One, two, three. Start again. One, two, three. It's great. Better. Much better. Pops. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm just great. What have you had it with? Okay, you're going to D.I.E. when I tell you this. <laughs> okay, so it, it came to my attention at a party I was at last night that there are parents that create social media accounts in the name of their child's school. And then all they do on the site is shout out their child for achievement. Then they retweet it or repost it on their own social media. Like, oh my gosh, look how nice the school is. They said how great my kid was. I mean, how fucked up is that? I have had it. Okay, hang on. Parent makes a fake school account. Account. Like, Blow Joe High School. Blow Joe High School basketball or Blow Joe High School football. And then only post their kid. Well, intermingles the school stuff. Maybe throws in a couple other couple kids. Ki- but very Does rarely. somebody at your kid's school do this? Yes. That doesn't even go to school anymore. At our, my kid's school. And is still shouting out their kid on my kid's school's website. <laughs> or fake, it's fake account. I'm telling you, these parents are out of control. It's un... I could not wrap my head around it. Kids are great. The dealing with the other parents. It's the hard part. Is such. A, could you imagine working at a school and dealing with no, these monsters? I could not. That would be the worst part. Being the school secretary, being the principal, right. being a How teacher. About disciplining a child at a school. Oh, do you remember like some of our younger listeners are going to lose their mind. But I remember when I was in elementary school. This friend of mine that I went to school with, he was kind of naughty. His name was Billy. And he was always sent to the principal's office, and he straight up got swats. Yes. <laughs> I got in trouble one time at, in middle school, and they said I could either write a paper or get a swat, and I wrote a paper. I mean, it was just like a paragraph. I can't even remember what I did. I'm trying to think. I hope See, it was Billy juicy. always opted for the swats. <laughs> in, in retrospect, I totally would get the swat. It's easier. It's right, over. but it's crazy. It's fucking bananas. Could you? And, and I don't support the SWATs, but no. I'm just saying, like, that's how far back. It yes, gets. yes. And now the parents are just—they're so crazy and unhinged. And most, I mean, in these kids whose parents do this, I'm just going to take a wild stab at it. I don't think they're going to end up being that successful. And they're just the most obnoxious, entitled arrogant pricks on planet earth my experience is the children of the power moms right are the most unlikable children yeah that's probably right i mean they are because they're so rotten yeah because it's just it's every day is you know you're so great you're so special you're so extraordinary the world you're a gift to the world yes look at my little johnny gift to the world yay little johnny again this is a group that you know ruins it for a lot there's a lot of parents that i've met that are super incredible and great but those types of parents that it's just a constant advertisement for their children i feel like you it goes back to they had some deep seated insecurity about themselves in high school and now they're trying to rewrite history with their child because most parents don't behave that way. We'll see. And here's the deal, too. I noticed this when I was probably around like maybe mid 30s. And I still noticed people that were obsessed with high school. Right. And they would ask me, where did you go to high school? Because they went, I went to a public school and some of these people went to some private school. Right. Who cares? Bitch, you didn't pick that. Your parents picked that. Right. And who cares? And, a court, you know, per the record, you're still living off your parents' tit. I'm not. <laughs> so whose education was right? better? So, I mean, your private school education, just you're still riding on the coattails of your parents' success and you're not doing jack shit. You owe back taxes. <laughs> Can't buy a house in your own name. All my shit's tight. <laughs> So I'm kind of going with the public school thing. Right. I mean, if we were to compare the two of us. Right. But people are just ridiculous about it. And then you have the people that peaked in high school. Right. And they still post about bands that they listen to in high school. And right. they still, like their profile picture is a picture of them in high school. They're knee deep in all the high school Facebook groups. Right. And I'm like, it was a fucking long time ago. Let's right. move on from high school. Right. And here's the deal. 
High school's all right. It's not the best experience of your life. Well, you think it is when you're in high school compared to junior high, but then you get to college and you're like, oh my God, that was a nothing burger. Well, yeah. And it's like, you're so young. I mean, you're still right. a kid. Um, let me tell you what I've had it with. Lay it on me. Okay. I'm fine. And I know I shouldn't be, but I'm fine with Apple having like Apple, the company, having a monopoly on phones. Right. And watches. Apple TV, watches, whatever. I'm fine with it. I know it's probably not good. It's capitalism fucking on steroids. I get all that. I like the product. Everybody knows we fucking love our watches. Yes. What pisses me off about Apple is everybody kind of went from the normal plug to the USB. I had USBs installed in my house. Right. They had USBs put on airplanes. They had USBs put on nightstands and hotel rooms. And then Apple goes and makes a USB-C. Right, I, which I think is on purpose, just straight up capitalism. They did not need to do that. That shit needs to be regulated. I agree. That is unacceptable. Because you now you have to buy all new everything. That's bullshit. Total. It pisses me off. They need to make a, a law that is a universal electrical, you know, outlet. That's it a big needs, government. <laughs> I know, but they need to do it because everybody is doing, you know, like, you travel, you get on an airplane, and then you realize, oh, I have the new thing, and right. mine doesn't fit in here. And I think it's bullshit. I agree. And I'm furious at Apple for that. It's a total fucking fraud. Capitalism on steroids. Everybody already buys all your shit. Everybody right. does iTunes. Everybody does Apple TV. Everybody does the watch. Everybody does right. the phone. More is just more, 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 to more. To change the outlet, Tim Cook, is total fucking bullshit no I completely agree I hate that when you don't have the right plug I with have, your same products I have had it right I, with that. I agree that shit pisses me off the government needs to step in I think regulations are good and we need to regulate this shit right because it's just a money grab that's plain and simple totally is and it was unnecessary everybody had just adjusted to the USB right and then you're rolling out the USB-C it's bullshit I've had it I have fucking had it and everybody else has too and y'all need to issue a public apology <laughs> and go back to the USB or give them to everyone free yeah exactly yeah Which exactly we know will never happen as I sit here with my Apple iPhone next to me and my Apple watch on and when I leave here I'm going to go watch Apple TV. Right. They're real fucking scared of me. <laughs> right. Yeah, they know it. that you're not going to boycott. That's why we need the government to step in and tell them fucking Yeah, but everything the government the gets involved in is fucked up. This is happening in the EU. It is. Oh, it is? Yeah, the EU is mandating a, um, a universal uh, cord. Yes, they are. And not every not everything the government gets involved in is get, is fucked up. That sounds kind of Trumpy. Well, but I'm just saying they're involved. Everything they touch turns to shit pretty much. Like what? Like book banning, trying to get in people's that's uterus. Not, that's not the government. That's the extreme right wing. Well, I know, but these laws. Yeah, you know, they're awful. They're awful. Um, okay, so welcome to I've Had It. Welcome to I've Had It podcast. I am a supporting member of the show. My name is Jennifer. <laughs> Shut up. You drive me crazy with that. I'm Angie. She is the star of our show, the Princess Diana of Podcasting, the best clapper in the Northern Hemisphere. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. People, some people say on uh, social media that I'm, I bully you <laughs> and I give you all this praise about all the clapping and all this stuff, <laughs> you know, and then you demean me. Why do I do me? For do I complimenting you. Well, because I know it's tongue in cheek. It's really you're not really I being I really nice. think you are the star of the show. I genuinely do. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. Someday you're going to look over here and I'm just going to bitch slap her. I mean that sincerely. <laughs> okay, Kylie, what's going on on social media? I want to read you a five-star review. Oh, Excellent. good. That's so nice. Scooter Cadillac wrote, the title of it is Saved My Family. And he wrote, this show is the first thing my mother-in-law and I have been able to bond over. She loathes me. <laughs> See that? Bringing families together. Thanks to the leadership from the Princess <laughs> Diana of podcasting, we are uniting families. You are exhibiting the exact kind of leadership this world needs. Right. Maybe I'll run for president. Oh, uh, could you imagine? Oh, uh, that's job not a worse that? job on the planet. Horrible. Horrible. This episode of I've Had It is brought to you by Just Thrive. 
Use promo code HADIT for 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic or Just Calm at JustThriveHealth.com. Pumps, how's that gut of yours doing? Much better. I feel like completely regular, normal person bowel movement. You know, I've been taking it. It's incredible. I do feel a lot better. I think there's a lot to this whole thing that gut health can really make you feel better, sleep better. The Frenchies are on it. That dog probiotic has helped them immensely. And we are all grateful. I know. And I'll tell you what, that um, Just Calm psychobiotic, have you noticed how much nicer I am? I have noticed. Isn't it great? It's great. Keep you them coming. You never want me to stop taking that Never, now, do ever. You? Maybe double your dice. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Listener, seriously, you have got to check out justthrive.com. This stuff is phenomenal. Use the promo code HADIT for 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and a 90-day bottle of Just Calm Psychobiotic. Go to justthrive.com and use promo code HADIT for 20% off. Pumps, I am so obsessed with all of my new Jenny Kane pieces that I have thrown into my wardrobe. I cannot stop wearing this stuff. It's simple, good looking, lightweight, timeless. What do you think? I love it. It feels great on your skin, and I love that it's so lightweight that I don't feel sweaty, even in the long sleeve pieces. Totally, and they're known precisely because they're... Items are luxuriously lightweight, which is fantastic, and they're perfect for any season. Sweaters, their classic cotton cocoon cardigan, the Lux cotton fisherman sweater, or the best-selling Chloe crew neck. These are core pieces that you can dress up or down all season long. I mean, listener, these are great staples to throw into an existing wardrobe and elevate your fashion in a very timeless manner. Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code HADIT at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code HADIT. Okay, listen up. We have a great episode ahead of you. We have our very first repeat guest besides Josh Welch. Right, who doesn't count. Who doesn't count. Um, and she is in Oklahoma city. So she is going to be in studio today. She is a comedian. She is a friend of the show. We absolutely love her. Let's welcome to I've had it. Kristen key. Okay. Kristen, welcome to Oklahoma city. AKA Action City. Action City. Oh, that's what they call it here. Action I've never City. heard that. I don't yeah, I'm know sure how. You, I'm sure you can tell by the bustling, robust downtown life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's a lot happening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. can't believe I'm here. I know. I know. It's so fun to I've have you seen in this studio. place on my computer, but now I'm in it. Last yeah. you were here. I was up there. Yeah. yeah. You were. I'm here. Yes. So exciting. Thank you for having me. Yes. And you're in town um, doing stand up, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm at the Bricktown Comedy Club. It's been so fun all weekend. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done. But what a fun week. Do you go back to California this today? I, uh, a couple of days. I'm going to drive over to Tulsa and see my parents for a couple of days. Oh, that's nice. So I, your yeah. parents are Oklahoman. They are. Okay. They are. So what's it like traveling, you know, across the country? Do you sense different personalities in different cities? Oh, yeah. Because I just came from a show in San Francisco to a show in Oklahoma City. Oh, that's a big difference. Well, I'm trying to build a lesbian army. <laughs> So I got all my lesbians in San Francisco, not, not a big poll, but in, in Oklahoma city, there were some lesbians, but then I noticed like Facebook, Facebook targeted ads. You can't just say to lesbians. So I had to be like, I need people that are interested in pickleball, LPGA, Brandy, Carlisle, cats, you know? And then I noticed my audience was like, Oh, a lot of lesbians. And then some ladies that were like, why am I at this fucking show? I'm like, Oh no, they just like cats. Oh, well, they, they like me at the end of it and they, and they right. join the army or whatever. Right. You haul, you could have tagged you haul. Ah, that's what I could do. Yes. Tiva sandals. Yes. Yeah. I'm Subarus. To, I had Subaru in there. Yeah, okay. Subaru's okay. In there. I'm trying to make Bert's Lowe's, a lesbian thing. Lowe's hardware store. <laughs> Lowe's. <laughs> so I play pickleball with a bunch of lesbians yeah. and, uh, this one married couple that I play with. They had this in between matches, they would go over and they had this rag and they would take the rag and then put it on their hand. And then it's like a sticky rag. And then they put it on the paddle. I said, what do you, what is that? And they're like, oh, it's a sticky thing to get the sweat off of your hand. And so that your hand will stick to the pickleball paddle. And I was like, that's weird. Did you get that like at a tennis store? Like, 
oh no, we got it at Lowe's. <laughs> Lowe's. And I yeah. said, that makes perfect sense that right. you go to Lowe's for your pickleball needs. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's nothing, that is peak lesbianism. Lesbians can solve anything. They really can. They do. A, my wife is at Lowe's a lot. And she <laughs> yeah. says, do you want to come? Like I no, I'm good. No, I'm, I'm good. good without, yeah, she's she covers the lows in our house. But. Yeah, these this cu- same couple that I'm talking about, they have like a a barn full of tools and machines, and they yeah. have like a ditch witch. I mean, these that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> they can literally like th- lesbians should run the country. Agree. We've been saying it for years. I yes. have never yeah. seen a group of uh, of people. That have their shit more t- so tight, so organized, they get more shit done. It's unbelievable. Lesbians are low key slept on as far as being leaders. Yeah. Yes. I'm. 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 I'm all for a lesbian president. Oh boy, it would be great, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be great? It would, it would be great. The, the jackets alone on camera, just yes. the amount of blazers that. <laughs> yes. The yacht captain could be in that. Crate. I love a blazer. I love a blazer. I love a oh, blazer. Or a jacket. Jackets. Yes. And, I mean, I have just, between me and my wife, it's just, it's it's a closet full of jackets and blazers <laughs> and some golf shirts and hats. Well, but I yeah. feel like we're being too positive. Right. You know? Oh, oh, shoot. I know. I, br- I bring that places. <laughs> <laughs> I got to try and bring it down a notch. People are yeah. coming here to trash talk. So why don't oh. you tell us what you've had it with? Okay. Well, lately, um, I've really had it with uh, not good pets. Because I, I, I love traditional pets, cats and dogs. Okay. Great pets. Okay. My wife is allergic to both. Um, and so people come up to me after shows and they'll be like, oh, if your wife's allergic to cats, do you know what you should get? And then they name a variety of stupid pets that I don't want or like, or they're tragic for children. <laughs> so this lady in Florida was like, you should get a lemur. And I was like, what, <laughs> what is a lemur? A le- it's like a little monkey. Kind of, yeah. And yeah. I was like, can you even legally own a lemur? She goes, you can in Florida. <laughs> and you're like, okay, we're not moving I was like, Florida. yeah, I know. You can le- you can own people in Florida. That doesn't make it. <laughs> right. But it's like hairless cats. People say hairless cats a lot. I think yeah. hairless cats are just revolting. Yeah. They're okay. so gross. I always thought they were, I always thought they were terrible. Okay. So then I'm an interior designer. So I go over to this client's house and they have this little hairless cat. Yeah. And the cat was like super engaged in the design meeting. The cat <laughs> jumped up and listened and was attentive. It's picking swatches. Followed us around, like tilted the head in a cute way. And then I kind of like started petting it. And I was like, well, it's not his fault that it doesn't have hair. This is an engaged, attentive, non-shedding animal. Don't get it twisted. I'm not going to have a hairless cat, but... The only hairless cat that I've ever met was quite impressive. Here's the problem with them. They're the most, like, of all the temperaments of cats, they have the best. Yeah. Oh, so they right? want, they want, they're, they're, they will snuggle, they'll come to you, which is awful. Because <laughs> they'll just, like, walk up and teabag you because they're <laughs> testicular, you know. And there's, like, to me, there's two kinds. There's the one that looks like the pink, grumpy old man. Like, they all look like yes. Republican senators. Just yes. meow, meowch <laughs> McConnell's. <laughs> And then they're the ones that kind of look like Jen. Just like a pretty face, just real thin. Did you just say that I look you like a hairless look- cat? It did not hit yes, me until yes. I started the bit. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. No wonder you like them. <laughs> but Okay, so hairless cats. And then what else are bad pets? I'm over hairless cats. Hamsters. Yeah, they're gross. Hamsters, they I'm, I'm against them because it's a tragic pet. Anyone that I know that has children with with a hamster, it's like, what are you, it's the first time your child needs therapy. Right. Because they die. They die. They right. die. And they die even if it's natural causes. Like <laughs> dogs and cats live decades. Hamsters, maybe the car ride home. You know? Right. <laughs> right. But then if you do have them for a little while, it's it's just a barrage of the as the worst ways to die. Yeah. And you have to clean out their little cages. There's poop everywhere. They li- Ooh, yeah. I just, I'm out on that. The whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I had mine, I had a couple of them. One of mine, his name was uh, Tony. And then we came home, found out Tony was Tina when he had babies. <laughs> yeah. And then ate the babies in front of me oh! and died from eating the babies. I had kind of forgotten they did that. I had a yeah. friend when I was growing up that, what? yes. It was a trans yes. cannibal hamster. <laughs> that, what? I think there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. A trans cannibal hamster. hamster. Yeah. How did it but get? But we don't judge. We don't judge. Oh, of course not. Except for the cannibalism is fucked up. Yeah, that's fucked up. But I've seen, I've, I remember that now. You don't want to yuck anybody's yum. <laughs> <laughs> I have an 
going at it with cannibalism. I haven't met one. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> probably that's a, a probably a deal breaker. Yeah. No, I do. I remember I had that exact same experience. And we were just like, ran and got the mom. And she was like, that's just kind of what they do. I mean, Why do they eat their babies? I don't know. Is it? I think a lot she of animals eat their theory, young, don't they? I have a theory on this. Okay. Probably didn't like being in captivity and didn't want to her babies to live with this same horrible owner. Were you the owner? I was. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Tip for tat with the, I look <laughs> right. like a hairless cat. I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, if we did a side by side, it's the pretty ones, not the ones that look like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Guess what's coming There's... to Instagram any moment now? Oh, I can't Kylie wait will for be it, doing Kylie. a video with me next to a There's hairless cat. There's some really, really sweet up. ones, and that's the ones, not the weird ones. Because there's right. like this great picture of a hairless cat that's like sitting with its stomach out. Not that one. Right. There's real pretty <laughs> Not really that pretty. One. Trust me, I have so many and this is something you mentioned you had had it with too, right? Hairless cats. Yes. 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 <laughs> but not the, pr- not once I got in here not and sat down, I was like, just like you. Not that one. <laughs> You're the nice one. Do you have any pets? We don't. We don't. So that your wife's allergies prevent She's you. She's allergic, which is a, a Latin word that means selfish. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it's keeping me from my dreams. But we really, we want, we want a, I, I think we're going to get a dog. She's less allergic to dogs. But this is another thing that I'm, I'm like, well, let's just say I've had it with. Right. Okay. I've had it with people that um, I think overregulate their dogs. Um. I think that dogs should kind of just like have avant-garde. I understand like train them not to pee in the house. Right. But- yeah, they can sit on the couch. Oh yeah, and oh, snuggle yeah. and stuff. Absolutely. And my, my wife has lots of rules. Oh she's no, just, that doesn't. Yeah, she's like, you, no, you're, she's not a good candidate to adopt a dog if you're not going to let the dog snuggle sit with on the, you. Yeah, they're like the lover. I mean, yeah. they're unconditional love all the time. So I have these two French bulldogs that are my biological children that I pushed out. Okay, you know, and yeah. So, in the summer, like it's been 100 degrees in Oklahoma. And so they like to be walked, but because of the smushed face and the short legs and then the concrete being so hot, I can't walk them. So I've been perpetrating fraud on my dogs for the last week. And it, it's really working out well because they come to me and they just look at me like, when are we going on our walk? When are we yeah. going? So I'm like, do you want to go for a ride? <laughs> and I get them and I load them up in the car and we roll down the windows and I'm like, look, there's a squirrel. And they're going back to back <laughs> and they like get all of this stuff going on. And it's like a 10, 15 minute ordeal. And they forget. And then we come right back in the house. I'm like, you were so good. And they come back in and they lap up the water. I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally perpetrating <laughs> exercise fraud on my dogs and it is working like a fucking charm. Oh my God. If you get real lazy, you just turn on the TV. Look, it's a walk. You're walking. <laughs> Ooh, look, you're walking through Mordor. Oh, yeah. you found the ring. No, I, I, I think you've got to get your wife on board with when you take this animal in. It's your biological child. We had different experiences. Like she grew up with a really like her dad was an Air Force colonel, you know. And so she's just like dogs don't need to like dogs are not allowed in the kitchen. I'm like, I'll let a dog eat spaghetti out of my mouth. <laughs> exactly. Like Lady in the Tramp Jared style. Spoon, just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. yeah. My boyfriend. <laughs> Like she doesn't like when dogs lick her. She's like, oh, that's no, no licky. No, she's no licky, licky. And when I, I've never cheated on her, but I've made out with every stray dog I've ever met. (laughs) That doesn't count. No, it doesn't. I love them. them. Yeah, they are. So are y'all still in the negotiating phases of? Yeah. Yes. Like I've agreed to a lot of her terms because I love dogs so much. Right. Because right. like we watched a friend's dog this last week and we're watching like we have two days between we watched it for 11 days. We have two days off. Another dog's coming in for like two weeks. Okay. So we like watch dogs all the time because we love them. Okay. Um, and so I've been like, all right, dogs are not allowed on the furniture because when me and my wife first met, it was like, we will not sleep with the window open. Well, guess who sleeps with the window right. open now? Everything so I'm like, of course say- dogs aren't allowed on the furniture right. until we get a dog. And I'm like, right. ooh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I did with my kids. I read all these books. I was like, this is exactly how this child's going to be. I mean, it's going to be yeah. a tight ship. Th- and then you take one look at them and you're better. So oh, it's kind of like the moms that see, like, you go out to a restaurant and I see these young mothers and they see, like, the family with the five and the seven year old and the kids are just at the table and their phones like this. I will never <laughs> do that with my kids. <laughs> Fast forward five years and your kids are fucking insufferable, should not be allowed in public. But there's one thing you can put in their hands that makes everybody in the restaurant not notice them. And guess what? Guess who's playing games at the table? Right. 
Mom to did. Get she did. Uh, she was a neonatal nurse for a bit, and she used to come home and laugh and laugh at the, at the pregnant ladies that came in with a plan. Oh, oh yes, yeah. I have a big plan. I was a big planner. Yeah. Didn't do all of it. My biggest yeah. one was they're going to eat what I make. Like I am not a right. fast food restaurant. And one time, I remember in my first house that you did, I was making rice, potatoes, and pasta. Each one had their own thing. And I just thought, you're the fucking worst. You're part of the problem. You're the <laughs> worst of the worst of the worst. Nothing in my plan did I ever do. No, nothing. So when she sees that little cuddly baby, it's going to be We're right there change. in the bed. Yeah, especially, and here's some arguments that you can use with her. Oh, okay. Like, dogs only live, their life expectancy is, <laughs> you know, 8 to 12 years. Okay. okay. So you can say, what's your wife's name? Molly. You can say a Mo- dog's name. Yeah. <laughs> you, say, you can say, Molly. You can say Molly. Like, like, I would understand it if, like, maybe me. If you said, you know, Kristen, I don't think you should do this and X, Y, Z, because I have this long life to get my needs fulfilled in other areas. The dog only has eight to 10 years. So are you going to deny this lesbian love child the <laughs> right? To snuggle up with its mothers, the you know, treat it like it's subhuman. We're gonna be feeding it like sh- oh, yeah. sushi. We're Caviar, gonna be feeding yes. this. Yeah, this this dog will be on a pillow. It's with gonna, an eye mask on. Right. Yes, <laughs> and a silk robe. Yeah. No, I'm. It's gotten so bad that I've started like when I finish my dinner, I just start feeding what's left to my ninety five year old, uh, ninety five pound Siberian husky oh off the fork. We got to talk about huskies for a second Ugh. because it, I'm sorry, I'm positive again. This is something <laughs> I, know, I haven't had it. it with. Okay. Oh my god, okay, let's do it. Okay, I've had it with all videos on the internet that aren't huskies having a tantrum. <laughs> with that, <laughs> what wow, the that hell? Girl. They're amazing. Yeah. How do people have huskies in their homes? Well, Kristen, I'll tell you, this will not be. I will not be the most popular person on the internet after I say this, but I started shaving my dog my husky all of the hair down to just like the nub so we've gotten along splendidly since okay. then so there's he's no a, hair he's a bald homosexual husky <laughs> but her he's dog the is gay sweetest okay. yes he yeah. has been from the jump but i mean he's the sweetest goes. snuggler i love this have an like, instagram no i would like to follow i can barely this run my instagram she's hateful and mean about people who have instagrams for their pets she's <gasps> one of those people but i'm i follow all of them i just I took a too. picture yeah, of him this too. morning i'll i'll send it to you okay because he's really sweet send me like 15 and i'll start him an instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> but he howls like when i drop him off to get groomed he will howl the entire day i'm always the first pet to be pet owner to be called because I walk in I park and I'm walking in and I can hear that moaning and then he sees me and he runs me over he's so excited they have that that howl thing what do you call it I don't like a cry kind they, of and they make all kinds of noise on the because they go from like a howl to it just oh, oh, oh yes oh, that's oh, what he does and and they don't shut up and no. I don't know how people have them I think it's the cutest thing to watch yeah there he doesn't yeah. do it at home very much he's a real mama's boy she's Aww. you've really you've you've she was a terrible pet owner for quite some time and she's really turning a corner and okay. they bonded a lot more with the sh- with cuz his hair i used to just they, sure. they're sure. bonding more. Just and i will say it is it's 105 degrees in right. oklahoma right now shaving him because he's not in you yeah. know alaska or right. northern yeah. canada it it seems somewhat humane although right. i I, I hope that you tell him consistently that he still is handsome and he's pretty because that matters. Well, and here's the deal. He never was embarrassed. Like the first time he did it, I would have expected him to be embarrassed. He really wasn't. It was crazy because you was, can kind of tell when they're embarrassed. Yeah. I think it's probably, you know, sometimes, you know, being a homosexual husky in a red state like Oklahoma, <laughs> you have to really, really te- got him ready. It set the psychological soil that prepared him to be a bald you know, I mean, right. the, the homophobia he he that, he t- that he faced in the suburbs in deep red Oklahoma prepped him for the upcoming bald. <laughs> That's what I would say. His life. If you're not making T-shirts that say homosexual husky in the state of Oklahoma, <laughs> you're missing out on a cash cow. I escaped from my red state. Right. Yeah, I left. Yeah. Went all the way to California. I went, yeah. I went from Amarillo, Texas to Los Angeles. Let's talk about Amarillo. Let's. What was that like growing up as a... Um, lesbian in Amarillo, Texas in the late nineties. Well, back then, like I didn't know any different. Right. right. So that was one thing that helped a lot. I was yeah. like, Oh, this is just what it's like. I didn't right. know it was better in other places or easier. So 
back then you really just, you didn't talk about it. Right. You didn't talk about it. No, it's just a real it's small. When I lived there, it's, I'm sure it's, it's a little different now, but a really small community of gay people. And so the dating pool was very shallow. Like you would, you would, you would date people you weren't even attracted to. Like, why are you dating her? Because I haven't yet. Right. She's the <laughs> only one. Right. She's I've left. I've got a list and I'm checking it twice. Here. Yeah. Or you date someone again, like, oh, why are you dating her again? Well, she went to rehab. She's a different person now. <laughs> you move I moved when I was 25 so I'd lived there the majority of my life and I moved at 25 I moved to Austin briefly and then but I only lived there about six seven months and then moved to Los Angeles and what a different place right totally nobody like I was in the closet with my neighbors in Los Angeles for like I don't know the first three months and then they were like we know we don't understand I'm like oh where I come from right. it's a slow come out <laughs> Right. It's a gradual come. I right. need you to like me first. Right. Right. And then you I realized out there, oh, you don't have to do that. Which is so nice. It is. But I didn't come out on stage till I was thirty five. Really? really? Because I still had it in my head from, you know, what I'd learned in Amarillo. I had the, right. the, the club condition. owner in Amarillo had told me from day one, don't don't come out on stage. Nobody wants to see a lesbian comic. Oh. oh. And so I really had that in my head. And um and so, yeah, 35, I finally started talking about being gay on stage. And well, how much more fun is that? Right. Well, yes. I, well, because I started talking not just about being gay, but about other things. I didn't realize how much I'd been censoring. Like, I wasn't talking about crocheting. I didn't talk about how much I love cats. Because I was like, oh, they'll, they'll know. I right. Mean, I had a very similar haircut. So they probably knew. <laughs> and people probably sat through my shows going, do you think she knows she's gay? <laughs> should we tell her? Someone should tell her she's gay. But, Yeah. So what, I mean, because this is, I, we grew up obviously in the Bible Belt and Amarillo is a part of that. Yeah, belt. it's the, the buckle. buckle. Oh. <laughs> we'll fight over the Are buckle. Are you the buckle? I don't I know. Like Oklahoma is the buckle because Texas does have some blue, big blue cities. Yeah. Yeah, but. Um, Our panhandles touch though. They do. That's true. It's like, like a the sh Texas shot pan, on I-40. We're, yeah, we're, we're all part of the same thing. But when. Because for me, I really feel for, because there's now this big surge, and we talk about it on the podcast quite a bit, this big surge of homophobia that has become really loud again. Like, it seemed like we had Will and Grace era, Ellen comes out, and then Obama gets elected, and then he lights up the White House with the rainbow flags. And I was kind of like, oh, God, that's right. so much progress. This yeah. is feeling so much better. And it was a civil rights movement that went lightning speed compared to other issues. Right. And now I feel like all of a sudden everybody's mad at all the gays again and, and, and all of these horrific tropes about grooming and all of this horrible uh, homophobic stuff that's been coming out. And I feel really bad for people because right now there are a lot of lesbians and trans and uh, gay men in red states, sure. in small cities where you grew up. And it's like now everybody's jumping on this bandwagon of you know, gay being so bad again, were you in your personal life, like in your family, were you scared to come out to them or to your friends or was it a process of coming out? It was a process because like my family is deeply religious. I came out when I was 16 and then I took it back three years later because it was that hard. Oh. Like I came out, um, I lost like my church. My church told me not to come back. Um, it's terrible. Then, it happens. It no, happens. Oh, it's, it's all the time. Terrible. Oh, it's it's but, more the it's, yes. It's more the norm, or they try to pray the gay away. Sure. Well, that that, that happens first. Right. That happens before, like late. Yeah. So all that happened. And what and, kind of church was this? It was the Church of Christ. Okay. Yeah. And no instruments. No instruments. Right. No dancing. And also, right. I've got lots of friends no and family that are no lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> lots of friends and family still go to that church, and now we have a much better relationship. But when I was young. I did not have any tools to how to like deal with that. I didn't have any, I, all I had was the ideology I grew up with and the fact that I'm gay. Right. And those two things didn't mesh and I didn't know what to do. Right. Right. And so I just went and I dropped out of high school. I lived with people I shouldn't have, like all kinds of stuff to survive for a long time. And then, you know, gradually kind of found my way in the world, you know, but it was a, uh, it was a hard, it was a hard come out, you that know, is hard. Real I think hard. that's why it's so important now to have like some, some visibility. Oh, Absolutely. I agree. I talk about being gay on stage. Yes. Um, 
with, uh, with no apologies. And I don't have to come out. I just talk about my wife. I talk about my life. Right. And right. I think it's important for other like small town or even big city lesbians to just see or or gay people or trans people or whatever to just say, you can be you. It's OK to be you. Right. You know, right. This is a safe place right here in this moment. Right. And uh, and I don't know, like. You mentioned other other like red places. My wife and I have a rule: we're, we're not going to move somewhere where it's not safe for me to use the bathroom, right? Because I'm a lady. I was born a lady, right? Um, I don't look like a traditional lady all the time, especially on an airport. Like if I put a ball cap on, right? I get a lot of young mans, <laughs> sir, young man. <laughs> like so many to wear now. When someone yells "young man" more than once, I turn around. <laughs> Clearly they mean me. Oh no, it was a real young man. Okay. And so I've had multiple experiences in bathrooms that were just uncomfortable. And I feel bad for people that maybe are trans or that, or, or just short haired lesbians. Right. You know, because when I see another short haired lesbian in a bathroom, I always at least like give a nod, like we're both safe right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I got you girl. Like oh, you're in the right room. so sad. It's it's what's but happening. It's, it's it is what it is. It, it is reality. Hate yeah. about it. And, yeah. and I think it's sad, but more than anything, all of us need to be motivated to platform people right. like you. You need to continue your normalizing that right. I am a gay woman. I am in a marriage. Yeah. We are functioning adults. We're I am boring. a Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. We're, you know, fighting about if our dog jumps on the sofa or not. Right, whether or not to feed a dog from your mouth. Right, <laughs> you know, and I, you know, really love the gay community. I have found, being an interior designer, I'm surrounded by just a gaggle of gay men. Being an avid, elite pickleball athlete, I'm surrounded by a ton of <laughs> lesbians. And I have said this from the jump. I would much rather have friends who have been through shit Right. Than the people in the white picket fence world. Sure. Right. I no want depth. people who have depth, who have grown from it, who have evolved from it. Hearing your story about how it took time for you to come out and getting rejected from your church and the growth that that caused to have now you sit in front of me. It, it, it causes a gravitational pull for me to to gravitate towards people like you because you have something interesting. I've never felt so bad about comparing you to a hairless cat. <laughs> like, <laughs> you fucking bitch. I do she deserve it. it. I do. No, no, I'm so sorry. And thank you. No, I do. People accuse me of being mean to pumps and so I really probably deserve the... Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys, everybody knows you guys love each other. <laughs> we do. Pumps are new, curvy, white boucle sofa that we put in our studio when we have a third person, an in-studio guest. Money. I love it. I know you love it because it's so chic, but I love it because it's so comfortable. And the quality is absolutely fantastic. Article is where we got it from. And Article believes in delightful design. And thanks to their online only model, they have really delightful prices too. Their curated assortment of mid-century modern, coastal, industrial, Scandi, and boho designs makes furniture shopping simple. Article's team of designers are all about finding the perfect balance between style, quality, and price. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash had it, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash had it for $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Pumps, do you have any idea how many subscriptions you pay for via your phone online? I think I'd be terrified to find out. You know, I think with all these teenagers we have, I bet we're getting double dipped nonstop. I 100% bet we are. Fortunately, I recently discovered Rocket Money. And this is an app that will find any subscription that you forgot about or any that you've paid for twice and didn't realize it. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Everybody seriously needs this app. We are all getting fleeced. There's no question about it. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash had it. That's rocketmoney.com slash had it. Rocketmoney.com slash had it. I want to play a game with you called Had It or Hit It. Oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. 
I would hit it. Pat it. Pat it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice okay. a day. Tell us if you've had it with this item or if you would hit it. Had it or hit it, healthy versions of good food. Had it. I've had it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I would like to eat uh, buffalo chicken wings. Buffalo cauliflower can suck it. <laughs> lots of dressing on the buffalo wings yes what the why would you ruin because like people are like oh my god i made cookies but i'm like S- if you ever say but right. when you make a dessert there's yeah. no sugar there's no butter right. and it's no like- flour no sugar no eggs i'm like that's not a cookie right <laughs> that's like a bunch of shit piled yeah. together <laughs> okay so had it or okay. hit it gluten-free cookies had it yeah i've had it no more no more i if you're gonna have a sweet make it the way it should be and then then like have a cheat day around it Right. Yeah. The whole, like, I have this personality type. If somebody actually has celiac, that is 1% of the population. Right. Yeah. And I feel really badly for them, but they don't make their diet a big issue onto yeah. other people. But mm. when I hear people, normal people that don't have any food allergy talking about not eating gluten, it makes me want to go get an IV bag of gluten <laughs> and inject that shit into my veins. Also grind up gluten and snort it at the exact same time because it just infuriates me. I'm like, lines of white bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a wonder. Woo. <laughs> Okay, had it or hit it. Speaking of snorting white powders, had it or hit it, stevia. Oh, I've had it with stevia. <laughs> oh my gosh, Kristen, I'm a big stevia person. Oh no, it doesn't Why mean do we you can't be it? friends. I've had it because it's to me, it's on the same thing of like, if I want a Coke, I don't drink Coke very often, but if I want a Coke, I'm going to have one Coke <laughs> and it's going to be delicious. And my mom's like, oh, I've got Cokes. And she'll pull out something. That right. resembles a cola. Like Coke Zero or something. something. Yeah. Yes. And and I'm like, it's almost a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag almost. Almost a Coke. Yeah. Had it. Had okay. It. And our last had one, it. had it or hit it, billionaires in the news. Had it. Had it. Had it. Had it. I'm so sick. Everything, everything they do, whether they're running for president or dying at the bottom of the ocean. Right. Stop it. Just stop it. Right. It's driving me crazy. We have uh, like billions of people on this planet that are doing amazing things. But all we hear about are these less than 1% of people with a billion dollars doing stupid shit every day. Stupid Stupid shit. shit. Stupid shit. So I saw... uh, our former president Obama in an interview and it was d- during the submarine uh, situation. Yeah. And he said, there was a ferry passenger boat off the shore of Greece where 750 people yes. died and nobody's talking about it. Nope. We're talking about these four billionaires in the submarine. And albeit that's sad, but I agree with you. It's just like the capitalism sometimes just gets so hyped up oh. that everybody's consumed with what these billionaires are doing. And I've had it. I've, I've had, had it. it. And I'll tell you what else I've had it with. I why are we still so interested in the Titanic? I don't understand the fascination. <laughs> it's like We're what is so turned. great about that? I mean, it's like it's saying it's down there. Why are we still talking about it? I don't get it. Why is it so enthralling? I mean, I liked the movie. It's a sad story. It's down at the bottom of the ocean. Right. I Enough leave it. already. Leave why, it be. Yeah. Why? I mean, a lot of a lot of ships have sunk. Why? Why, why does is, the why Titanic we, get right. preferential treatment? Yeah, it mm. just seems to be just over the top about the Titanic. <laughs> I've just I've had it with people that want to talk about the Titanic all the time. Yeah, I'm 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 a huge Titanic fan. Okay. I, Are you? I wrote a paper on it in the seventh grade. <laughs> it was before the movie came out, and it was like I got super into it. But yeah, I recently was on a big ferry boat from Sicily to the mainland of Italy, and like our Uber car went on the boat, and then we went up to the top and ate a hot dog. And the only thing that was going through my head was Celine Dion's right. "My Heart Will Go On" <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that was going through my head and i'm like i hope this ride isn't very long i know we're gonna go down and it's just i could just see her like you know just punching the right. shit out of her chest like she did you did know? you and yeah. josh get up there and do the arm thing no did he draw you like one of his french girls <laughs> Kristen key we you know we are not uh we are only good at one thing and i would say we're moderately good at it and that is this podcasting thing. But you are kind of a jack of all trades. Right. With the guitar. I love the guitar. 
So, listener, this is a treat. Kristen is going to sing us a, a song here at I've Had It. I was trying to think of which one to play um, because How about, we were going to talk about, we talk about pets. Right. Yeah. And then we talk about marginalized groups like gay people. So I, I couldn't decide whether to play one about weird pet owners or... Uh, marginalized I, pets? Yeah, I decided <laughs> instead I'm going to just going to sing the lesbian national anthem. Oh, Okay. <laughs> I drive a Subaru, (laughs) donate to dog rescues, have arm tattoos. Fem, butch, or cottagecore, we like to be outdoors in hats and cargo shorts with our ugly shoes. My shoes are comfortable. My purse is functional. It has bird's bees. My arms are always flexed. I stayed friends with my ex because we share a pet. It's a gay girl thing. Pickleball. That was amazing. Pickleball. Kristen Key, I have to say, it is always so much better when we get to have our guests in studio. Yes. Thanks. So great to have you again and your perfect skin. Oh, my God. You could talk about that all day. Is that a lesbian thing? No. Perfect skin? No. no it's no. genetic. My mom's amazing. <laughs> oh. My mom has great skin. It's it's the genes. Well, listener, thank you so much for joining us today. Kristen, enjoy your day in Action City. Right. Uh-huh. Thank you so much for having me. And this has been a, a, a just a, a, I sound like an old lady. This has been a real treat. It's, it's been, been so real, special, I lady. I always say that, but it's like. We always say that. It's been a real treat. It's a real treat. It's been a special real treat. Listener, please give us five-star reviews on Apple. And we will see you next Tuesday or Thursday. And follow Kristen at. At KristenKey.com. Go to www.KristenKey.com. You can find all of my socials there. And I have a million videos. Watch all of them. Her Instagram is a it's great perfect. follow. Yeah, We're Insta great. friends. Yeah. I love your love feed. It. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bye, Kristen. listeners.